on the right side, we are beginning to see recovery as a new organizing concept within addiction treatment. We're beginning to see pushes towards this concept of, re of long-term recovery management. People are beginning to challenge about wrapping recovery management within recovery-oriented systems of care. We're getting new roles like the recovery coaches, et cetera. So lots of things going on over here on the parallel. What's amazing, though, is what's going on in the middle. We got basically a new recovery advocacy movement. We're beginning to see new recovery support institutions and a, a culture of recovery emerging beyond anything that has historically existed in the United States. We're beginning to see these kind of abs advocacy posters. We're beginning to see recovery is everywhere campaigns launched not by addiction treatment programs, but by local grassroots recovery community organizations. We are beginning to see the mobilization of people in recovery. In 2001, uh, recovery advocates came together in St. Paul, Minnesota and launched what has become known as the New Recovery Advocacy Movement. We are now seeing an explosive rebirth of grassroots recovery community organizations that are not mutual aid societies and they are not addiction treatment programs. Historically, we didn't even have a category to talk about them. In these new recovery support organizations, we're seeing recovery community organizations we're seeing the development of recovery community centers whose primary purpose is offering non-clinical recovery support services for individuals and families in long-term recovery. We're beginning to see a growing recovery home movement in the United States. And by the way, the RCOs that are spreading in this country includes the Massachusetts Organization for Addiction Recovery, Moore, who was one of the early leaders in this movement. We're getting the spread of, re of a recovery home movement that is almost beyond comprehension and off the books. These are unfunded for the most part. These are individuals in recovery coming together, recognizing it's not enough to have a commitment to recovery. They got to have a world they can recover in. And they're beginning to build the physical space where that recovery can occur by joining together with other recovery people living in these houses with very simple democratic self-governance that says, don't pick up and pay the rent. Um, we're seeing a recovery school movement in the United States, including the Boston Recovery High School that I had the privilege of coming in early yesterday and visiting. We're seeing collegiate recovery programs. I go to a large campus and I walk into an open recovery support meeting on the campus and I'm stunned to see 200 students in the room. I know they only got 30, 35 students in their so-called reco campus recovery program. And I say, who on earth are all these people? And here's what they tell me, told me specifically, one school. We're averaging between one and two individuals per week from the campus at large entering recovery because of the contact with our recovering students on campus. This is in an abstinence hostile environment, agreed? Which is how I would characterize most colleges and universities in the United States. So this recovery school movement is flourishing. We're getting recovery industries. We're pe people in recovery who begin to hire. We're getting companies that have figured out uh, recovering people got a lot of lost ground to make up for, and some make very, very good employees. They will work their tail off. And so we've got companies that literally exclusively hire people in recovery. We're getting recovery community centers build in vocational training and job coaching. We're getting recovery ministries. Let me give you an extent of this growth. Churches in the United States, including in this city, whose doors were not open to addicted people in the 1980s or people with HIV and AIDS, agreed? At the height of the cocaine epidemic and all of the craziness and insanity that went with that at a public policy level. Those same churches today have very aggressive recovery ministries. Celebrate Recovery is worth a mention in this context. Begin founded in the early 1990s, now exist as a faith-based framework of recovery in more than 10,000 churches in the United States. And you know what? In the treatment field, it's almost off our radar. Almost off our radar. And my point is, our world has been the world of treatment, 
and the world of mutual aid, and there's a whole nother world emerging that we must become students of. We're beginning to see recovery cafes, recovery sports kind of activity. We're seeing a, a, an elaborate culture of recovery, of, of issues of history with its own values and language and symbols and literature. We're beginning to see, if I could summarize the trends and go to implications, four things. Tremendous growth in the varieties of addiction recovery experience. And as more and more people tell their stories, we're beginning to map out the immensity of that diversity. Number two is we're getting new, historically unprecedented recovery support institutions and new recovery support roles like recovery coaches and recovery support specialists. We're beginning to get a, 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 an increasing focus on how do we build the physical space where people can recover in, as opposed to recycling an adolescent through 10 inpatient episodes of treatment. Maybe it's time we got out of our offices and went into the world that adolescent lives in and began to advocate for young people's meetings in that community and recovery support groups in the schools and student assistance programs in the schools and a, and a recovery coach that can follow that child from a treatment institution into that community and help them build a life in the community as a person in recovery. And we're seeing a growing interest in the concept of community recovery. The idea that some communities have been so wounded by addiction and related problems that the community itself needs a recovery process. So we're beginning to talk about moving from our focus on the individual and maybe a little shimmer of shadow of the family to begin to talk about it's time we began to heal whole communities that have been wounded and create the space in those communities where people can not only recover but begin to break intergenerational cycles of alcohol and drug dependence. 